Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome uh, to this session about how to deliver an interactive online teaching session. Um, this is an, uh, an, an interactive webinar in which uh, you will experience different ways in how you can uh, have an interactive uh, session in an online settings. And um, we created this, this uh, session in uh, collaboration with the Community for Learning and Innovation at the Erasmus University Rotterdam. And we delivered this uh, webinar uh, almost weekly uh, uh, since uh, uh, June, I, I think. And it's a low threshold way for teachers uh, yeah, to get to know more ways of interacting with students online, which have been quite challenging for, for most of the, of the teachers and maybe also for you. Um, so we hope to give you some, uh, some ideas, some inspiration um, on how it is uh, possible to, uh, to have this interaction still in this online setting. Uh, my name is Remy Vermont and I work as an educational consultant at uh, RISPO at the Erasmus University. And I'm uh, delivering this session together with my colleague Rachel, who is next to me on my screen, but I'm not sure if it's the same on yours. Um, and we are both involved in a lot of teacher training programs at Erasmus University Rotterdam as well as a lot of innovation projects related to uh, online education. Um, so we have an online etiquette for this, uh, for this webinar. Uh, we would kindly like to ask you to mute your microphone, uh, which all of you already did, if I uh, look at it correctly, um, unless it's your turn to talk, of course. And we are also going to use the chat uh, during this session. You can use it to ask questions. Uh, we only have about an hour to, uh, to deliver this uh, interactive session uh, to you. So if there are any questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, Rachel and I are here together. So one of us will be presenting and the other one will be monitoring the chat uh, and answering questions. Um, next to that, we will also use the chat to answer questions of us. And actually this online etiquette is already the first uh, thing that we would like to share with you. And we also uh, share with, uh, with the teachers who participate in these sessions as a way of uh, setting expectations towards the students. Of course, also online, there are a lot of functionalities, a lot of ways of, uh, of dealing with these functionalities. And it's up to the teacher to decide what functionalities you want to use and in what way. And uh, it can be really helpful uh, as a teacher to think about this kind of things before you start teaching an online course and also to, to yeah, literally communicate these kind of guidelines towards your students. Uh, normally, we already start with interacting before the uh, 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 online uh, webinar session. And normally we ask our teachers to share their expectation of the webinar via the Padlet board. And uh, Padlet is a uh, tool uh, on which you can uh, ask teachers to post all kinds of uh, uh, things or messages or answers to a questions. And normally we use it to already uh, ask them to share expectations so that we know their expectations, but also to let them experience the first online tool, which they could also use in their own courses um, for gathering input uh, ideas on uh, all kinds of topics before the live online sessions take part. So during today, we will uh, uh, share uh, a few things with you. Uh, we would like to do a few online icebreakers uh, to let you experience uh, them, but also to share with you why we think those are very important. Um, then we move on to tools to activate prior knowledge. Uh, we will share uh, a, sh a short bit of instruction in which we share some good practices of teachers at Erasmus University. And, and then we will finish with some tools to wrap up. Uh, so uh, it's all about experiencing different things. It might be quite luck because it's all, only an hour, of course, uh, but we see it as um, an opportunity for cherry picking for you. So see what's interesting for you. Uh, interesting uh, uh, for your work and uh, see what you can take out of it uh, to improve the types of activities that you are involved with within your work. 
So then we go to the first icebreaker and therefore I'm going to stop sharing for a bit. And the first icebreaker uh, is uh, raise your hand. And um, I'm going to uh, say a few statements and I would like to I invite the people who have their cameras on to raise their hand if that statement applies to you. So could you please raise your hand if you are looking forward to the Christmas break already? Same goes for me. I think everyone is a bit like there are only two weeks and then uh, <laughs> it's already there. Uh, could you please raise, raise your hand if you feel like online education is here to stay? Walter has a bit of this. Could you maybe explain your view on this? Well, I think I'm Walter Jans, I'm at, at LAP at uh, Maastricht University. But I think as we just heard in this in the keynote as well, uh, it, it's not just a digitalizing the curriculum as we had it, just to, to avoid study delay. Um, it's about going back to the core of your curriculum redesign or course redesign. So what are my learning outcomes? What's my type of assessment? And sometimes there is no fancy tool needed to still make sure that education can take place and, and, or collaboration happens. Um, it's, it's, uh, but I think what um, Mr. Reich also said, the Zoom, Google Hangouts, or Google Docs, um, and the learning management system do a lot. And, and I'm, I'm coming from a university that has PBL. So basically everything we do is, 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 is in small scale, physical, usually on campus, physical. And, and that's of course the world I'm in right now to, to, to make sure how to transfer PBL best to the online setting, but also where does it not offer an added value? Um, yeah, so they're, they're there for the, the, the unclear hand. Yeah, yeah, I can totally relate to that. It's all about having added value. And now, of course, we have the, yeah, the focus more online education because we have to. So we can experiment with a lot of different ways of having these on, online interactive sessions, but also to offer asynchronous activities and tools to watch for students. But yeah, in the end, it, uh, we have to take a look and, and think about what, what's best, what suits, what learning outcome best. Uh, so I can relate to that. Um, some interesting uh, developments there. Um, could you please raise your hand if uh, the last couple of months you have talked to students about their online educational experiences? Uh, Wilfred, I see that you do a thumbs up. Uh, could you maybe explain what you've heard or share some insights that you've heard from the students? Uh, yeah, it, 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 not, not the students of the uh, Open University, but other students from another education where I am a uh, guest teacher and they complain, especially about uh, the lack of social contact. So uh, it's, 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 they, they, they learn in a good way, uh, but they miss a lot of, uh, they met their colleague students. Uh, so the importance of socialization uh, is emphasized by, by them. So that's what I was, I thought was one of the most striking things to hear, to hear in the last uh, a few months almost a year yeah well thank you for sharing yeah I, I, yeah i think that's very interesting to to see that the, the the added value of this social parts in learning is maybe even bigger than we already thought it was uh, before COVID 19. Uh, so that are uh, interesting insights uh, thank thanks a lot um then i'm going to share my screen again and raise your hand was the first online icebreaker. We've used it as an icebreaker right now because it's really low threshold. The only way, only thing you had to do was literally raise your hand. And we use it now for sharing experience, getting to know a bit about you. But of course you can also imagine that you can use this type of activity with more content related statements to check on opinions, to check prior knowledge. So there are different ways of uh, using this type of activity. Um, what I would like to do 
and now is to share a poll with you. And now there, there will be a few questions on your screen. I would like to ask you to answer those three questions so we get a view on yeah, your involvement in teaching and in which way you are doing that right now. Going to end the poll now because of the time, and, and uh, I share the results also with you, and we can see that well, it's almost half half uh, people who, feel who are involved uh, with teaching uh, uh, right now, um, and there are a few who have taught completely online, or one who has been teaching hybrid, and the other side was not applicable to. So that's also good for us to know for the rest of this, uh, this session. Um, and it's also a way of sharing the polling function within Zoom, which is also uh, a quite usable uh, uh, thing to use. You can set it up before the, the session and you can imagine that also for this, you can use content related uh, questions in which you can check students understanding quite easily. Um, so it's a thing that we use uh, quite a lot also to create interaction. Then we have the third uh, icebreaker and that's an annotation activity. And therefore I would like to invite you to open your annotation bar in Zoom. And you could do that by moving your mouse to the top of the screen. And then uh, uh, you see you are viewing the Remy from on screen and then you have this view options button. If you click on the arrow, the menu folds open and you can choose annotate. Then the annotation bar appears and I would like to ask you to select the stamp function and there you can choose a stamp that you like best. So hopefully you were able to find this functionality and then we are moving on to the actual question. And that is how confident do you feel in delivering interactive online session? And you see a line here in which we have this little puppet, which we interpret for now as a starter. And uh, the wise puppet to the right is the like fully completely experienced one. So please put your stamp on the line where you uh, uh, think it best represents your ex experience. So I see that uh, the young put the stamp quite to the right. Could you maybe share uh, a bit about your experience? Uh, well, of course, um, I haven't taught myself the uh, 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 preferred time, but I coached all the tutors, so um, I've experienced a lot of the educational. Um, uh, and I now create my own course and well, I think it's okay. We made a lot of uh, changes and our students um, are quite positive. So yeah, that's well, uh, it's going okay. Yeah. And yeah, that sounds good. And that's also very positive to hear that uh, the students also value the efforts that you put on it. Yes. Well, thanks a lot. Um, so we see some variety. I also see uh, uh, Danka on the left and a few more in the middle. Um, and also this uh, annotation activity is a way of creating interaction online. We now use it as an icebreaker again, based on your experiences, but also this could be a way of introducing, uh, for example, online discussions in a uh, um, live session. Uh, we have experienced that having online discussions is quite a challenge because students either feel a bit shy to say something within a group or are afraid to interrupt someone else who's just starting to share their um, opinion. So sometimes it can help with starting with statements and then you have an agree disagree line. And then you can literally ask some of the students, hey, can you share your perspective on this? I see that you 
put a stand totally on the left? Could you share your opinion on it? So then you structure the discussion uh, a bit more than you would do in a real life uh, a session. So also, uh, yeah, a way of, uh, of using that. I'm going to clear all drawings. You can close your annotation bar again. And uh, yeah, we've let you experience a couple of icebreakers and we do that on purpose with our teachers uh, as well, um, because we think it's quite difficult to feel that connection in this uh, uh, participation in online courses. You might have experienced it yourself as well uh, when you start in a meeting in a completely new group, maybe with people we, we haven't met it's quite difficult to feel that same kind of connection that you would normally feel if you are really in a room uh, together. Um, so starting with, uh, with these kind of icebreakers can work a little bit towards that more feeling uh, uh, connected to each other. Um, so we recommend our teachers strongly to, to try that out and uh, uh, to have attention for the social part in learning also in an online environment. Next to that, we also know that if you start with interaction right away in a low threshold way, uh, it sets expectations towards students. So they know, okay, in this session, um, they do expect some interaction from me. And if you build it up a little, so with first only uh, having to raise your hand, then maybe put a stamp and then maybe sharing uh, more um, information in discussions, and that can really help in having more interaction as well. And, having students who are more daring to respond to your questions. Um, so that's the reason that, uh, that we use them and share them with our teachers. Then I'm going to stop sharing my screen and give the floor to Rachel. Yes, and I will start sharing my screen immediately um, because we would like to do a activity to um, check on your prior knowledge to show you how you could do that with students as well. And we would like to do so via Mentimeter. Amy, is my screen visible right now? Yeah, it is okay. Um, so our question to you is which online tools have you used already or have you seen that might be of inspiration to others? And we would like to answer you this question via menti.com. You can go there via your internet browser or via your phone and access via the code 7135104. And then you will see this question popping up and you can enter one or more tools by there. So please take your time to, uh, to go there and share some of the tools that you know. my screen you can see what the others have posted already or yourself if you have been so far away <coughs> i see a wide variety of tools already on my screen uh, Mentimeter is bigger on this word cloud, which means that more than one person has entered that. Um, and I think it's a very helpful tool to uh, check on prior knowledge as well. Uh, we yeah, frequently use this word cloud, um, but uh, there are also many other types of questions, such as multiple choice questions, open questions, Q&A function as well, but also uh, sliding a question. But I also see a, a very different tools, some tools uh, that I'm also not familiar with. Um, I see feedback foods, which we do use as well sometimes in Canvas, like more the asynchronous way to have interaction with students, Teams and Zoom, of course, um, to also host sessions. Um, yeah, I do see some, some new tools to me, but maybe because of time, I'm most curious if you see some tools here that you would like to get some information about from, from one of the other participants. 
I'm not sure, Remy, maybe if that's already posted in the chat, or if you have a question about one of these tools, please mention the tool in the chat. No? Okay. So if you want, you can take a picture of this, uh, this word clause if you want to yeah, make sure that you keep this inspiration for, um, for tools for yourself. So you can look them up later on. Yes, I saw some phones. I hope that everyone has been in time. And then I will stop sharing my screen again so that the slides can pop up again. So it was really nice for me to inventorize with you what kind of tools you already know and that you have a right variety of tools. And, and that's why it also helps to try, yeah, to inventorize your prior knowledge via such a tool. It's yeah, very easy for you to just share your inputs. Uh, and as a teacher, you can then uh, decide on the pace of your teaching or the, the content that you will be teaching or what kind of students you will ask to elaborate. Um, so, so that can really help. And uh, Mentimeter, as I mentioned, for Erasmus University, they have a paid license now, so you can uh, create an account there so that you can ask as many questions as you would like to have in a presentation. But also for the ones that don't have that, it's still uh, free to use um, and easy to use if you just use it for a few questions per session. Uh, that is always possible and, uh, and really helpful for prior knowledge. Um, then, as Remy mentioned already at the beginning, we will also um, explain to you how you could do more like a lecture chunking in an interactive way. Because, of course, your session, your session will not be only interaction with your students and, and getting to know each other, but you also want to deliver some, some knowledge and some explanation. And how can you do this in a more interactive way? Well, one example that we always uh, say is already here on the screen. It's a listen uh, question. So, it's a question that you pose just before you start explaining something, uh, which makes sure that your students are more in a listening modus and they, uh, uh, they will know what will be the focus of your explanation and what they will have to do with that afterwards. So in this case, um, we would also like to ask you a listening and prepare question, which is which example of online interaction or tool that you have heard in the webinar would be interesting for your course or your work, uh, and how would you use it? And after this short uh, lecture chunking, we will do an activity in which you can discuss this question with each other, uh, and we will ask you also for an example of how you uh, could use one of the um, tools or, or activities that we did in this webinar uh, in your own teaching or, uh, or your work. Uh, so we would like to give the question to you already. Um, the more theory that we want to give to you to also explain, uh, also show and demonstrate this lecture chunk is the model of uh, constructive alignment. Uh, is it already familiar to you? Could you raise your hands for the ones that have their webcam on or if your hands who know it? Walter knows um, and Sabina and Wilfred too. So it's 50-50. Um, that's good to know. Very short for the ones that, uh, that aren't familiar with it in their own practice. It's a model that we use in, in many of our uh, teaching professionalization tracks. Uh, it's basically always the starting point uh, of what we, what we explain to teachers. And uh, it means that there should be a good alignment between the three elements that you see here on screen. And the learning objectives, the learning goals are uh, always the starting point for every course that you design, or even every very small session that you design, uh, the learning objectives that you want to reach after this session or after this course uh, are always the ones to think about on forehand. It's the very first thing. And then, uh, if you have this starting point, um, the assessment is what you're going to think about uh, because that is what you want your students to go to. And in this assessment, students should be able to uh, demonstrate that they have achieved the learning objectives or not. Uh, so there should be a good alignment between the learning objectives and the way they are going to be assessed in the end. But then the sessions that you deliver and that you want to make interactive, of course, um, are the learning activities uh, that should be also perfectly aligned with the two of these. Um, of course, you want to provide learning activities 
um, that enables students to practice with these learning objectives and also to yeah, prepare themselves for the assessment method in the end. Uh, so it's really important to carefully think about um, uh, what kind of activities are you going to provide to your students so that they have the best opportunity um, to, uh, yeah, to master the learning objectives and to prepare for the exam. Uh, and that is also what, what we want to give to you about online interaction and online tools, because tools are, of course, just a method. They are never the goal in itself. And you can really think about how can I use these tools and these activities so that they really match my learning objectives and that uh, I, I really provide students the best activity uh, that they need. And, and every tool or every activity that we show uh, can be adapted to different kind of levels, cognitive levels that you want uh, your students to reach. For example, more an understanding level or that they should just memorize something. Uh, but you can also adapt these tools to a more higher way, higher level, um, so that students really have to think about their own opinion or their own statements. Um, and, and yeah, we would like you to, to challenge yourself to really think for every tool or every activity, does it really match my learning objectives and how can I make sure that they do match um, these activities? And then, of course, also what your personal style is, is also important in the kind of tool or activities that you choose, uh, but definitely also the, the learning objectives. And uh, Remy has seen some, some inspiring examples for other teachers from Erasmus University, uh, which she will uh, shortly um, explain to you. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, so we would like to share some good practices of uh, some teacher of how they make use of different uh, kind of uh, tools. And the first example is uh, actually an, a reflection question using the annotation uh, uh, bar that we also use in the icebreaker. And here you see an example of one of their teachers that is participating in the senior teacher trajectory. And uh, one of the questions that she had for her students was uh, who is qualified to prescribe medication? Uh, and here there was a list of possibilities and they asked uh, her students to put a stamp on the uh, people who, who they thought uh, are qualified for this. And it already gave her some input in, in you know, well, do they do it correctly, first of all, uh, or are they completely lost uh, at some of these things? So she could also adapt her uh, instruction uh, after this activity to what the students already uh, and know about it. And another example is uh, this one. Here is the text uh, functionality used from the annotation bar. So students could literally type in uh, some answers. And the question here was uh, uh, name at least three cognitive elements from uh, chapter four. Um, so it was uh, a question related to checking prior knowledge. What do students still remember from chapter four? and they could just uh, write it on the screen. And uh, it also, uh, uh, yeah, it activated the prior knowledge of the student, but also informed the teacher of what the students remembered from that chapter and if they were right or maybe completely wrong. Uh, so where there needs to be paid more attention uh, from that chapter. Another activity is uh, one from our own uh, training programs which is, uh, I think, a nice example of how you have this alignment between learning and objectives and the type of activities that you do. Um, in this training program, uh, it was meant for teaching assistants, uh, and these teaching assistants uh, also needed to provide feedback to their students. So one of the learning goals was also to provide uh, good constructive feedback. And uh, in the training session, they were doing uh, some role playing to experience with different uh, strategies in communication with students. And after each role play, we asked the, uh, the students to uh, communicate, communicate their feedback in the chat. So this had uh, two goals. One of the goals was that all of the uh, students who were not participating in the role play were still actively paying attention because they had to deliver feedback after the role play. And on the other hand, it was an opportunity for each student to practice with formulating good feedback. 
so that is an example of how you could use chat uh, in a teaching session to create more interaction, but also to, uh, to, to have it as an opportunity for students to really practice with, uh, with formulating feedback in this case. So now we are going to the next activity that uh, Rachel will introduce. Yeah, so that you can set up the breakout rooms. Um, as mentioned uh, before this short lecture tube, uh, we would like to get back to the listening question that we, uh, that we mentioned, which was which example of the tools or activities that you've just heard would be interesting for your own teaching or, uh, or your work? And how would you use that? Um, Listen or reading the chat, I already said some saw some ideas of how you could maybe apply some of the activities, but I think it's very valuable for you to talk about it in, in small groups. And then after uh, the short breakout rooms rounds, um, we will ask each of you to in the chat just very shortly one sentence uh, report what kind of discussion you had, what kind of tool you discussed, and 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 maybe already how you could apply this tool or activity in your education. So just an opportunity to share some experiences and ideas with, uh, with some others. And then after that, in your chat, share your, uh, yeah, something about your discussion or the tool that you would like to use. Um, we will make groups of three, I think, two groups of three. And uh, Remy, how long shall we do this? Um, you will have seven minutes to, uh, to share. And it's also about experiencing breakout rooms yourself. Exactly, because breakout rooms are, of course, also a way to have your students uh, in a more yeah, experience uh, uh, discussion. So uh, we see you back in uh, seven minutes. Shall we pause the recording maybe? Or is that not possible? Twenty seconds left, and then they will be back. Welcome back to the first group. Wait for the second. Well, in the meantime, you can already um, start typing something in the chat. Welcome back to the other group as well. Hope you had an uh, interesting and valuable discussion with each other. Uh, it's easier, of course, than in such a plenary group. Um, as mentioned before, please um, post something back in the chat for us about what you discussed, and specifically the kind of tool or activity that might be interesting for your own education. Or your work, if you do not teach anymore, it can also be just in meetings or other kind of sessions. I see uh, indeed the annotation bar. It's really nice, but that was of inspiration. Uh, mm -hmm. Holly, got to know. Um, I see the thing for share, and I think it's good that uh, it was raised by Wilfred because indeed we didn't mention it explicitly, but I think it's very good to do so right now because it's a very general activity which we frequently use in many different kind of ways. In this case, 
uh, in the uh, uh, breakout room way. Um, but it's a very helpful activity to yeah, make sure that all students think about something individually first. So you activate all your students individually. They also get a chance to elaborate on this question in a small group. Maybe that's safe for someone. You don't immediately have to share it in a plenary session. Only after they have had the chance to discuss something in pairs or small groups, you discuss this question plenary. And that's, of course, exactly what we do now. But this setup of this layer, these three layers, can be used in many different contexts, of course. And I think that's, uh, that's really helpful. Um, so that was good to read. Um, and uh, just previously in the chat, we also saw an idea from Marlene about uh, students that give a presentation to each other. Marlene, could you maybe explain that a little bit more because we were very interested. Oh. <laughs> no, um, uh, my students go three days in a week to uh, a working place, um, a construction place. Yeah. And, um, they, um, in, when we, um, before, uh, we explained how everything was elaborated on the, on the working place. The students didn't go there or at the end of their studies for one month. Now they are going for two years, every week, three days. Mm -hmm. And um, um, we, ask, we, 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 um, we ask them to describe a, a certain action on, on the working place. And they make a presentation out of it. In the beginning, we let them free, but the second sem semester, we say you have to follow a, a certain um, layout. Uh, you have to, uh, we, we um, give them, uh, yeah, we say them that they have to describe with photographs, that they have to look for security, uh, uh, quality. I mean, we tell them to, uh, at, at what they have to pay attention. And then they make very interesting presentations because the working places where they go, they are very big play. I mean, the, it's not uh, really, in, it's impressive what they see. And uh, they see more than we can explain them or show them by, show them by, um, by films. And because the technology is always, if, if, if uh, oh, my, my English, I'm sorry. It's yeah. fine, yeah, yeah, we can uh, But, and, and they really make r uh, beautiful documents. And then when the, in the, the, the presentation are interesting and afterwards, because they, they, have, they experience simulate, uh, no, things are a bit different, but they, they recognize something. So they start to, to, yeah. to ask questions to, to one another. And if something isn't good enough, uh, then we say uh, that, that they ha can correct their presentation and 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 then load it up so that we can evaluate and give them like points yeah. we when they have explained everything with photographs and they make um uh, taking it they draw they draw yeah. too and they and integrate that in the presentation so it's really uh, we are astonished of the, of the level we arrive because it's it are uh, students who don't like to study and they don't have to, they don't like exams at the end. They are afraid, they have problems sometimes, but when, uh, and they are motivating one another. When they see that a, a friend of them can do that, they're they are quite um, um, good in, in uh, making presentations. Even someone who has, um, uh, who is older and has a little of experience, uh, but as a diploma, they come to our stud, uh, our, they can uh, follow the, uh, the formula. Yes, thank they you, Marlies. I think it's a really nice example no, of how structure it's, it's, can help. It's the second year that we do this, but we are very, very um, um, pleased by the result. Good to hear. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And it's a nice example of constructive alignment and also how providing structure can help in, in also guiding such an online activity. Uh, some other uh, ways maybe of how you can deal with such a breakout room activity, uh, because of course also this breakout room activity is of a, an example again to you how you could apply that in your own education. This way we choose to um, uh, yeah, ask for your inputs in the chats. 
um, so that you all can individually uh, uh, give some report on this. But of course, there are different ways to, um, to ask for a report from your students or your group. One general advice is that um, uh, you should always already mention on forehand before the activity um, what kind of reporting activity there will be afterwards so the students are prepared for it and I can also uh, dive into depth about yeah the kind of discussion that you will have afterwards um, and that can be for example that uh, you ask each group uh, for a pitch by one person and that they can already prepare for that already um, it can of course also be the, the Mentimeter or the polling that you already have experienced. You can also use this after a breakout room activity uh, to ask also for individual inputs, but more uh, anonymously uh, instead of the chat. Uh, you can also combine this synchronous activities with asynchronous activities. For example, we have a learning platform Canvas uh, where students sometimes before a session can uh, post their questions or their responses in a discussion forum, but you can also use this during a session um, so that students in a breakout room activity can already uh, together uh, participate in an asynchronous activity on, on the learning uh, and management system. Uh, and the Padlet boards that you didn't experience, but normally uh, our participants have already, um, this Padlet board can also be used as a way where students can uh, post their inputs uh, during a breakout room. Uh, and also Padlet is um, for, uh, for limited use, free of use, um, and uh, can be used in many different setups like general uh, boards or uh, um, more structured discussion flows also. So there are different ways to ask for inputs from your students after a breakout room, but most important is to mention on forehand what kind of uh, way you will. I saw that there was a, a question from Bill Fritz. Yes, I'm wondering, uh, do you know um, uh, a format developed by uh, employees of the uh, ROC van Amsterdam uh, Community College about a format for a breakout room as, uh, assignments? Uh, for uh, if you use uh, during longer sessions, you use more uh, longer breakout rooms uh, sessions. Mm -hmm. It's uh, recommended that you uh, use a, a structure for the assignment. They have developed a format for it, and it's very helpful. Oh, that's 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 good. Here, can you can you shortly describe it, or is it too complicated to? Uh, no, for example, you you describe the uh, a, a, a sort of trigger. Why should you make this? What is the purpose of this uh, assignment? Um, and what you also, for example, uh, describe is uh, what should be the individual contribution. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can share it uh, in a minute. Uh, is it something you can share in the chat or should yeah. we ask? Yeah. Okay. So, so continue and then yeah. I will share it, uh, I will look it up. Yeah, thank you very much. That's, uh, that's always good to hear and I think of inspiration to, uh, to anyone here. Um, so that will follow after the, about this discussion forum. What we would like to do to wrap up this webinar before we can uh, dive into further of your questions uh, is one more time the annotate uh, activity, but this way in a, uh, in a different uh, setup. So instead of standing on the line, we ask you to put a stamp close to or over the emoji that best resembles your mood about online tools and online interaction. So maybe you have forgotten how to get to annotate. It's when you move your cursor up in the screen, you will see a green bar mentioning you are viewing Remy's remote screen. And next to that, you see few options. Uh, and there's also the annotate bar. And you can just choose a stamp and put your stamp near to an emoji that you, uh, yeah, that you recognize yourself in. I already see some close to the, um, to the happy emoji, the even heart eyes emoji and the cool emoji. Remy, could you maybe see some names? I cannot really see it because my screen is very small. Uh, yes, I see that uh, Sabina has chosen the, the smiley with the hearty eyes. So could you maybe explain why you've chosen that one? Hello everyone. Uh, so I chose this one because uh, this session really 
helped me uh, improving my online session. I think that uh, from now on it will be more interactive, uh, especially um, using polls and and, uh, and uh, annotation like this one. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, my feelings are <laughs> positive, more than positive about those online tools. Thank you very much. That's really nice to hear. I'm glad that uh, you are uh, now more uh, confident to make your sessions more interactive. Thank you. Yes. In the meantime, I see that we have posted the, um, yeah, the, the guidelines for uh, assignments via breakout rooms in the chat. So thank you very much. It's in Dutch, but uh, well, um, still of many to you for inspiration. Um, and thank you all for your uh, for your input in this uh, in this webinar. In the in the webinar that we give to uh, Erasmus University teachers, we al always end with some some further experience because we are very much aware that just one hour of a webinar uh, maybe not enough to to fully um, um, make your your sessions and your education uh, interactive. And so we always um, mention what what other support is possible. Um, via the community for learning innovation that we have. And some of these resources are also uh, publicly available. So we still would like to mention that. Um, we have some micro labs. These are our, our workshops, blended workshops for our uh, Erasmus University teachers. And uh, we also um, uh, mentioned that, for example, they can follow a workshop about how to lecture with impact, uh, activate students in small groups, or blending your course with Canvas. So there's always a follow up after this, um, this webinar. Um, sometimes we do supported design sessions so that we really go and think with a teacher individually about his or her course and what kind of sessions could match the learning objectives for this course. Um, with some uh, resources that can be uh, used by you as well are the, the bottom two uh, points. Uh, we have a web page from uh, the Community for Learning and Innovation with different guides and, and resources and instruction videos about all kinds of didactic topics that are also um, very helpful in this time of online education. Um, so activity guides or um, manuals for online assessments uh, and overviews of what could be used when. Um, so that is something that we always uh, mention. And uh, Teacher, it's the final point. It's a very new platform actually. Uh, created by um, by different teachers from the university with help of some um, uh, didactical experts and they created like a platform uh, that is compar comparable to booking.com you can just uh, fill in some filters about the teaching session that you are going to give like the number of students and the, the time period that it takes and um, the kind of objective that it has uh, and then you will find a list of activities that may match uh, your uh, your session and your goals. Um, so it's the same as booking an hotel, but then finding an, uh, an online education and activity. Um, so these two uh, are maybe of use as well. Um, and maybe after we have um, yeah, closed off this uh, share screening, we can also copy paste the links to the chat so that uh, you can access them from the chat because there's very long links. But it's good to know for you that these are, um, yeah, yeah, reachable for you as well. Um, I think that was it for us. Um, thank you very much. And there's some room for, uh, for questions now. Uh, and maybe also from some, yeah, final explanation from Wilfred, whose hand was raised also. Or maybe it's not. No, it was more about to 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 make you uh, aware of a question by Hank. Interesting about uh, the composition of breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, Hank, could you maybe clarify your question? What is the best way to compose the rooms? In in what way are you curious about? Um, the, uh, I have no experience with it. So first of all, who makes the decision about the, who is in which um, uh, group? Yeah, that's already uh, a good Is that question. a teacher? You can, it depends on, on what you like, both as possible. So you can either do it just randomly, so that just Zoom decides uh, who will be there. You, of course, have to say uh, how many students should be in one room. 
but then you can um, you can either yourself make sure to divide the students over the rooms or you can just do it automatically in the newest version of zoom it's also possible for students to self-select a breakout room then of course it's possible to create breakout rooms with a certain interest topic or, or yeah topic that you would want your students to choose from and then self-select a room that is applicable to them but then it's a requirement that you yourself and all your students have the newest version of zoom so yeah. i did it once but then you should ask on forehand to download this version what but is the so, best way what, uh, do you think? what are your experiences we usually just do it randomly especially if you have a very large group because it's difficult to do it on forehand then you need all the the email addresses and with larger group it's really difficult on the spot to uh to to make sure everyone is in the right group uh, i mean i always have the luck that we do this together so that Remy can do it while i am explaining or the other way around then of course it's easier but if it's up to you it doesn't really matter then you can just do it randomly if of course there are some groups already formed previously in the course and they should have the time to yeah as buddies discuss a topic with each other then it's important to make sure that they are in the right group and you should either ask someone to do that during the session or you should take your time to do it yourself and so it really depends on the yeah on the topic and the, the activity so the other day i did pre-assigned breakout rooms so i made them which is also a bit time consuming but then you don't do it live so you can do yeah. it in your own time yeah but zoom doesn't really because we had about 60 people uh, but zoom doesn't really take in all the email addresses that you give so you still have yeah, to do exactly. some stuff manually but yeah. at least it can save you a little bit of trouble yeah it's a good it's one if you, if you have the email addresses already on forehand you can already make at least a start with assigning students to the right groups are there any other questions? Just one minute. I see that Remy posted the links from our presentation in the chat. So uh, you can save these if you uh, want to take a look at these later on. I also asked a question about the anonymity of the polling uh, system. You know, Zoom uh, was forbidden to be used in uh, Leiden University. Now it's open because people were afraid that uh, data were not uh, safe, you know, that other people could look at it, etc. But uh, the po so it's crucial for polling that the students know, okay, we can do it because it's safe, it's anonymous. But uh, is there a guarantee? Uh, students will ask, probably. Yeah, fair point. Yeah, it, it, it's not visible uh, for the for me as a, I'm the host right now, so I don't I didn't see uh, who uh, selected which answer. Uh, but I'm not completely sure how Zoom that will uh, process. Uh, so uh, I I won't uh, say anything about uh, about that. Uh, but yeah, from the what you see, you can't see any names. Uh, so that's that's good to know. But we definitely should take into account all these kind of issues. Yeah, for sure. I think it's time to go back to the main session. I think Gabriella is already ready to put the link to the, the main session back in the chat. I would like to thank you too for, your, for your active participation and hopefully we gave you some ideas, inspiration, or otherwise maybe an interesting chat uh, with, uh, with a few uh, other uh, education-minded people. Uh, so uh, thanks for participating and uh, good luck with-, uh, with Thank your you very work. much.